Hey, this is Eddie from A Mindful Emergence. I have a question for you. Actually, two questions. And the first one is, do you find yourself dealing with a lot of self-judgment, self-criticism, negative stories about yourself? And the other question is, do you find yourself often stuck in real difficult emotions that tend to pull you down, emotions like anger or sadness or grief? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about how and why self-compassion self can be helpful for you. So Eddie with A Mindful Emergence, where we help you really reach your full potential by accessing your own inner resources by using mindfulness, movement, and breathing practices. And I invite you to check out other videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Uh, there's several playlists you can pick from. Uh, obviously, if you want to get more videos, uh, we upload a couple times a week. I invite you to subscribe, hit that notification bell. And of course, we always appreciate it when you like our videos and comments are always appreciated. So back to the point about negative self-talk or self-criticism. Um, I'm a certified alcohol and drug counselor. I'm a certified yoga instructor, a meditation teacher, breathwork facilitator, and I'm also a person in long-term recovery. And I'm in my 15th year now of, of recovery. And uh, over the years as a counselor, I not only have my own experience, but I have worked with thousands and thousands of people struggling to find recovery. And some of them successfully and some of them not so successfully. And a lot of times return to use or relapse, whatever term you use, happens because people get down on themselves and they get caught in this negative self-talk and a sense of unworthiness, uh, self-judgment, even self-loathing and self-hatred are so pervasive through addiction and they run themselves right into recovery, especially early recovery. And it can really pull us down. Uh, many of you are familiar with resentments. Resentments are talked about a lot in meetings that we go to. And certainly resentments about other people or other things can present a problem. I think the biggest problem is when we have resentments towards ourselves. And uh, that's been my experience. And uh, so that's one thing that uh, one way that self-compassion can really work. And I'm actually going to describe a little bit more how self-compassion works. And I'm going to put in the description with this video uh, some very simple phrases that you can repeat uh, that are a way of practicing self-compassion. But I want to bring up another point. I was watching a, um, actually it was a Facebook post that I saw recently where a woman apparently had experienced a lot of uh, loss, some pretty severe loss. I don't know what the details were. She didn't share that. But she said that she was really caught up in grief. And this grief had really been lasting a long time. And she was really suffering as a result. And she was sort of sharing her frustration that she was still experiencing all this grief. And people were putting up comments, uh, trying to be helpful and telling her, you know, time will heal, uh, heal all wounds and just hang in there. And, and, and I thought that those were well intended. But the reality of it is sometimes we experience loss, and we don't get over it. We just some stuff just doesn't go away. We have to figure out how to live with it. And that's, you know, and, and if we if we judge the grief and you can you can apply anger, sadness, other kinds of strong emotional experiences. If we want to judge it and make it wrong and treat it like it's an enemy and, and actually bring hatred to it, like I hate this grief, I got to get rid of it when we do that. I don't think it's necessarily, and then just one opinion, the most effective way of working with it. I think what's more helpful is to recognize that it's there. And rather than trying to push it away, figure out how to work with it. And one way we can work with it is by bringing compassion to it. And there's some ideas that when we practice compassion, that maybe it's weak or soft or woo woo. And it's not. Compassion is the capacity to meet our own 
suffering, whether it's struggling with pervasive grief, whether it's struggling with negative self-talk that's really getting to us, it's, it's the ability, the capacity to meet that with an element of strength and to be able to work with it and learn how to live with it. So there's three components to practicing self-compassion. And the first one is practicing mindfulness. You know, that word we hear all the time, bringing our awareness to present moment experience and being able to do it with a certain curiosity and lack of judgment. So for example, negative self-talk or pervasive grief, if we can just pause and acknowledge, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm telling myself about this experience. So if it's negative self-talk, we can just pause and go, wow, I'm really beating myself up. Or I'm hearing those old voices, those old messages rattling around in my head. There I go again, but not doing it like, oh, there I go again. I'm really messed up. It's more like, oh, there I go again. Okay, I see that I'm doing that. And also feeling into our body and asking ourselves, how do I experiencing that? If there's certain strong emotions, do I notice them somewhere in my chest, my shoulders, my jaw, perhaps just breathing, and maybe even leaning into it a little bit and saying, okay, I, I'm experiencing this, and maybe I can be with this. I don't have to make it wrong. I don't have to make it the enemy. I don't have to judge it and try to push it away. Because see, that's what we did when we were in our active addiction. If you're like me, is you say, this is bad. I don't want this. I'm going to distract myself. I'm going to numb myself. And those in the long term aren't effective strategies. But if we can just go, okay, so this is what's happening. Okay. And maybe I can just allow this to be here for a while. So the second thing, this is really important, is to recognize that whatever we're going through, whatever we're telling ourselves, whatever kind of crazy shits in our head, or whether whatever strong emotions are really eating at us, this is just part of being human. Everybody deals with it. Whatever we're experiencing, it's not unique to us. We're not inherently messed up. We're just going through something that's very difficult. That's part of being a human being living on this planet. Okay. There's nothing flawed about us. All right. So first point, mindfulness. Second point, we're not alone. The third part, self-care. And it's asking ourselves, what do we need right now in order to find some balance in this situation, whether we're stuck in a sense of grief or whether we're spinning out with some negative self-talk what do i need and it's not the same for everybody and it's not the same for us every time so in one situation i might find that it's useful to pick up the phone and call somebody and talk to them about it somebody who's caring and 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 will listen and not judge me because i'm freaking out okay for example or Maybe another time, instead of calling somebody, I might need some alone time. I may have to tell my partner, you know what, I need some time by myself. Maybe go for a walk, right? Or sit and meditate, right? Or take a hot bath. Maybe sometimes we need to move our body, get the energy up. Maybe other times we need to rest. But it, it requires that willingness and that ability to pause and ask ourselves, what do I need? right now. Self-care is the key. And everything that Margaret and I do with the mindful emergence ultimately is a form of self-care. And you know what? We need to do it for ourselves. You know, we can ask someone else to do things for us. Hey, can you give me a back rub or, what, or whatever it is? But this is a skill. This is a coping strategy to deal with difficult experiences, whether it's a tape loop in our head that's negative, or whether it's some type of really difficult emotional experience. So 
I hope that's helpful. Again, in the description, I'm going to put some phrases that you can use when we're struggling to try to bring self, you know, bring nurturing to ourselves. And obviously, if you want to talk more, uh, there's ways that you can reach out to me. And if you want to uh, work with us, you can even schedule a uh, what we call a discovery session, a consultation just to talk to us and see if we can be a good fit for you. So anyway, thanks for listening and we'll talk to you next time.